So what we're going to do next is to talk about the model as both a transient and a static model simultaneously. We have a slightly different setup of exactly the same model here. In this case, the physics global setup is made to be a transient model. So in the transient case, what we've done is we've created two sources. One is the ground that you see at the bottom, and one is the step voltage that you see applied at the top. And if we look at the nature of the step voltage, you see that it's a one kilovolt applied voltage, which takes place as a step source, which kicks in 0.05 of an hour and continues for five hours. When we run this model then, we are going to, at the beginning, see the effect of just the permittivity, and as the time goes on, we're going to see the effect of the conductivity kick in. So we have the same outputs defined. We can simply ask to run the solver. In the interest of time, we won't show all 100 time steps complete here, but you can see what the solver is doing. It's running a finite element analysis, and it's doing 101 steps over a course of five hours. And what it's doing is it's solving the model and then computing the plots that we asked for and then advancing the time a little bit and resolving so that we will in the end be able to see a sequence of plots showing the time evolution of the fields. Once all 100 steps have been completed, and the total simulation of time of five hours is available for analysis, we can start looking at results. So if we start with time step number one, then you see this is before the voltage is turned on, so it's basically blank. We go to step number two, 0.05 of an hour, and here we see that the instant it's turned on, the voltage in the electric fields look very much like the initial problem that we solved with extremely small conductivity, so the permittivity was the dominant effect. So you notice that the plots look very similar, except the quality is admittedly a little bit less as we get away. And the reason for that is that in order to do the transient solution, we did use a finite element solver rather than a boundary element solver. And that means that to pick up the quality of the analysis to be as good would have taken a little bit more work. But for our purposes here, this uh, will certainly demonstrate the effects that we're interested in. So if we progress by another five hundredths of an hour and show that step, you can see that over these time frames, not very much is happening. So essentially, if you had this as a DC problem, and you just flipped the switch and turned on your high voltage and you waited for something like 0.2 of an hour, which is 12 minutes, the problem would still look very much like it did at the instant you flipped the switch. So this is essentially a perfect insulating device over this time frame. If we refer back to the web page where we have the calculator, you can see that the time frame predicted is about one hour. So if we go back and we advance up to a more substantial fraction of an hour, then you can see now the shape has evolved a little bit. If we go to one time constant, which is one hour, then you can see it's advanced further. And if we run the animation of the results, then what you can see is that over the five hours, Every time constant is bringing the voltage down about one more shed. And so over the course of a few time constants, we see a shift from the permittivity being the dominant effect to the constant.
conductivity being the dominant effect. So as time progresses, instead of the high field being right at the edge of the top cap, the high field instead is around the tips of the insulating sheds. And the space in between the sheds is showing a high field as well. So when you talk about high voltage DC and insulators, you have to realize that time frame is important. No matter how small the conductivity of a material is, it is not zero. That means that eventually the analysis will look like a conductivity analysis. The only question is whether the conductivity is such that the time frame is milliseconds, seconds, hours, days, weeks, months, years, but eventually it will happen and it is something that in the work that I do I have heard many times from people is we have a very good insulator, we flip the switch, turn on the high voltage and a few months later the device fails and when they do the analysis what they see is that the extremely small conductivities over the course of a long time, depending on the values, lead to a very different field distribution than what they had over the shorter terms.